In part two here, we're going to look at how uh, F double prime affects the graph of F, and we're going to look at what's called concavity and inflection points. Okay, well, um, let's look at these first two graphs. We say these graphs are concave up. Uh, you could think of concavity, uh, a graph is concave up when it's bending upward. Notice this is bending upward, so is this one. Uh, concavity has nothing to do with whether a function is increasing or decreasing. Uh, I always used to like to think of it as holding water. When a, a, a graph that's concave up holds water, a graph that's concave down doesn't. Anyway, the, the way we define it more, more, more formally in the book is we, we say that if ever you draw the tangent line to the graph where it's concave up, the tangent line will always lie below the graph. That, that's how Stewart defines it. The graph lies above its tangent line. You can say that. All right, so notice F is increasing, but F is concave up. And here F is decreasing, and F is concave up. So again, concavity and increasing and decreasing have nothing to do with each other. Look at these two examples, though. These other two. Notice uh, these, these are called concave down because um, they're bending downward. Or, uh, as Stuart would define it, if you draw the tangent line here, the graph lies below its tangent line. F is increasing in this one, but F is concave down. Here F is decreasing. It's also concave down because it lies below its tangent line. F decreasing and F concave down. So again, the definition is a function is... Um, if a function lies above its tangents, then it's concave up, and if a function lies below its tangents, then it's concave down. Um, a more helpful way to look at it, it turns out, uh, notice what's true about f prime when the function's concave, let's do concave up first. What's true about the slopes of these tangent lines? Is, as you go from left to right, aren't the slopes increasing? So we say f prime is actually increasing whenever f is concave up. Same is true here. See how they're, they're becoming less ne negative, so therefore they're in increasing. F, is, F prime is increasing whenever F is concave up. Now, when F is concave down, the, the derivatives, the slopes of the tangent lines at any point, are going to be decreasing. Notice how they're becoming uh, less steep. Here they're becoming more negative, so again we would say F prime is decreasing whenever F is concave down. So this turns out to be really important. We're going to use this. We're going to use this last fact to help us uh, find uh, when a function is concave up and down and the inflection points. And an, an inflection point is a point on the graph where the concavity changes, either from up to down or down to up. So, uh, uh, it is important to note that an, an inflection point has to be a point on the graph. Um, let, let's take a look at this. As you, as you look from left to right, doesn't this graph appear concave down at first? So the, 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 the function is concave down until some point over here. It looks like the concavity might change somewhere around here. Now, now it's concave up, see? And it's going to be concave up until it changes again, I don't know, somewhere, somewhere right around here, I guess. And then it's going to be concave down again, and then for a while it's going to be concave up at the end. So you, you would say uh, f is... Um, concave up on, let's see, 0 or 2 to 4, right, 2 to 4, and then again from 5 to 7. And if it's concave down on the interval um, 0 to 2, and also 4 to 5. And there's going to be an, in, an inflection point at 2, an inflection point at 4, and an inflection point at 5. Alrighty, now this, this next thing I want to talk about is probably the most important because this is what's going to help us um, find uh, exactly when a function is concave up, up and down. Recall we were talking about the first derivative test here where the, um, a function is increasing on an interval precisely when the derivative is greater than zero, right? So any, any, any blob is going to, any blob function is going to be increasing on an interval exactly when the derivative of the blob is greater than zero. That's kind of what this first thing says. g of x is increasing on i if and only if g prime of x is greater than zero. Well, let's, let's throw in a function like, I don't know, how about f prime? f prime is increasing on an interval 
precisely when the derivative of f prime, which is f double prime, is greater than zero. And recall, f prime increasing means f is concave up. So this is how we, how we connect the concavity to, the, to f double prime. f is concave up precisely when f prime is increasing, precisely when the second derivative is greater than zero. And in fact, if it isn't clear by now, it will be very, very soon. Everything you need to know in this section can be summarized right, right here. For the first der derivative test to find the local max and min of a function, f prime is greater than zero precisely when f is increasing. f prime is less than zero, by the way, precisely when f is decreasing. And what, what we just got through saying, second derivative greater than zero precisely when f prime is increasing, precisely when f is concave up. These three things mean, mean the same thing. For that matter, you could also say f double prime less than zero, precisely when f prime decreasing, precisely when f, con, f con, concave down. So we're going we're to use the second fact here when we um, use what's called the concavity test. And I want you to find the intervals of concavity, that's where f is concave up and down, and the inflection points. So we want to know where f double prime changes sign. Well, how about finding where f double prime equals zero first? Where f double prime equals zero, those are called the critical numbers of f prime. So you take the derivative, and it's so much fun, we take the derivative again, set it equal to zero, and then uh, when you set it equal to zero, you get x equals negative one-fourth. Okay, now, now you're trying to find when f double prime changes sign, so what better than making a sign chart? You make a sign chart for f double prime, and you pick an x value less than negative one-fourth, plug it into f double prime, uh, like a number like negative 100, this, was, this would clearly be a negative number, so f double prime is negative, that means f is concave down, right? And when you pick a number greater than negative one-fourth, like how about zero? f double prime is positive, that means f is concave up. So therefore f is concave down, negative infinity, negative one-fourth, f is concave up, negative one-fourth to infinity, and you have an inflection point at x equal negative one-fourth because the concavity changes and x equals negative one-fourth is in the, the domain of the function. Well, let's do another one. Suppose we have the trig function f of x equals sine x minus cosine x on the interval from zero to two pi. Find the intervals of concavity and the inflection points. If, what, if this seems from a, like a familiar thing, it's exactly the same thing we were doing when we found the local max and min using the first derivative test. Except instead of finding the critical numbers of f, we're finding the critical numbers of f prime. In other words, instead of finding where f prime is zero, we find where f double prime is zero. But it's the same exact process. Take the derivative. So much fun, we take the derivative again. Now we set that equal to zero. We find, and, and this is kind of tricky. Look, to find set this equal to zero, that means sine of x equals cosine of x from zero to two pi. It might be easier if you divide both sides by cosine x, then, then you would get sine over cosine x equals one, but that's just tangent of x equals one. Do you know where the tangent of x equals one between zero and two pi? Well, there's one in the first quadrant, pi over four, and there's one in the third quadrant when, when sine and cosine are both negative, that would be five pi over four. And so again, to, to finish this, we, we need to know where f double prime changes, where f double, when f double prime is positive and neg negative. Um, so, so what we do is make, make a sign chart for f double, double prime. And what, what we find here is that if you pick a number between zero and, and pi over four, it's kind of hard to find a, a good number to pick. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick like an x value really close to zero, but just a little bit bigger than zero. Over here on the unit circle, it would be, It'd be like right over here, just a, just a little bit above zero. Wouldn't the um, cosine be almost one? Wouldn't the sine be almost zero? So therefore, the sum of those would be positive, almost positive one. What's a good point to pick between pi over four and five pi over four? How about pi? Sine of pi is zero, cosine of pi is negative one, so the f double prime would be negative one there, or negative. And then a good point to pick between five pi over four and two pi, again, let's, let's use that trick I was showing you. Let's, let's pick a point that's almost two pi, just a little bit less than two pi. Wouldn't the cosine be almost one and the sine be almost zero? So when you plug it in the second, uh, into f double prime, this becomes almost zero plus one, so it's positive again. So, so remember, uh, the, the function's gonna be concave up from zero to pi over four, and again from five pi over four to two pi, and it's concave down from pi over four to five pi over four, and you're gonna have an inflection point at pi over four and five pi over four. 
and we're going to leave. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.